partnership with Oasis Water. Everyone can do their part by joining the fight with the simple act of purchasing an Oasis Water with a specially marked red label. Every purchase will go towards contributing to a product donation fund delivered directly to the frontline staff in our hospitals through the charitable organizations that we have aligned with. Our product donation will be used in the preparation of food hampers that will be distributed to the many families and communities in need who have been severely impacted by this crisis. A little bit goes a long way in this fight. Sip and support today. Help us contribute to those who have given so much back to us through their work on the front lines. Lend of your support as we provide food relief to those families and communities in need. Learn more about this Oasis Cares initiative at www.myoasiswater.com. All bakers, double vendors, and roti makers. Try our high quality unbleached bromate free all purpose and baker's flour. Low price and conveniently packaged in 2 pounds, 2 kg, 10 kg, and 25 kg bags. For wholesale and retail prices, contact Shikleisha Limited, 665 3336, or visit us at Warrenville, Canupia. Shikleisha Limited, quality you can trust. Shopping on the website at shopsmj.com is tailor-made to be accessible and easy to use. It's especially helpful in these trying times, but it's also a time saver in general. They have impeccable customer service with a fully equipped online team of friendly and efficient staff who are more than happy to assist. The delivery service is also reliable and punctual. The ordering process couldn't be made simpler. Just visit the shopsmj.com website, create a username and password, select the products you wish to order, and wait for the delivery drop-off. It's simple, it's easy, and relevant for the times. Please remember to stay safe and stay home by taking advantage of this great online delivery service.
Good evening, assalamu alaikum, and welcome to see results on IBN TV and the IBN TV Facebook page, as well as the see results Facebook page. I am Sir Ijaz, and we are very pleased to be back with you here uh, for see results. And you know, we are not quite into our second season as yet, as it as it turns out, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has delayed the SEA exam until now we are not 100% sure when the SEA exam is going to be and we know that the students have been away from school for a very long time they ought to have written this exam since the 2nd of April and they are quite frenetic and quite nervous and that's very understandably so so we began back in November with our first season which was a little bit later than we had hoped to start so therefore there were still some topics where we could have gone a little bit further with so thankfully in that sense we are able now to move forward with you and try to get you as prepared as possible for the exam whenever it does come around um, so you know we will be having some new viewers uh, I would assume from today going forward and it's it's we welcome you all thank you so much for joining us I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we've done so far before we delve back into our content uh, which we'll be starting from today. So we looked at basically uh, the mathematics paper that comes for SEA. We've gone through this before, but we're just going to mention, you know, some points again for you all, for everyone's benefit. The math paper is 75 minutes, and there are 45 questions in this paper. It is divided into three sections. And each section has, well, section one and two has 20 questions each, and section three has five questions. The, those in section one are worth one mark each, section two, two to three marks, and section three questions are worth four marks each. And of course, this indicates the level of difficulty of the questions, right? You start with the easier questions, and as you move on in the paper, it gets more challenging. So, we have different strands. Uh, the, the way that the curriculum is structured, there are four strands that are tested. We have number, we have measurement, we have statistics, and we have geometry. Right? Well, actually, geometry comes before statistics in all of these sections. So what, what we've done so far in this season, well, this is a continuation or an extension of season one, right? We've basically done all section one, all types of section one questions in the various strands. So we, we won't be doing any of those in a hurry, right? Um, we've looked at most of the section two questions in the number strand, most of the types of questions that come um, under the number strand in section two because number has the highest, no, the highest number or quantity of questions in the paper, right? And we haven't really looked at section three questions in the number strand. So of course, we're gonna be doing that in the coming weeks, God willing. Uh, what about measurement? We've looked basically at questions from all the various sections in measurements, right? Sections one, two, and three. And the same can be said of geometry and also statistics. So that does not mean that we won't be doing more of those questions. Of course, practice makes perfect, right? But for the uh, coming few sessions, we're gonna look at wrapping up number, doing some questions from section two in the number strand, as well as questions from section three in the number strand. And then from then onwards, we're just gonna be working on practice papers from start to finish, right? In the past, we've been looking at strand by strand, going through the different sections. We've done that for this season. We may do that again in future seasons, all right? But this current crop of students, they've been with us. And if you are just joining us, of course, you can look at all of our previous videos on our Facebook page, see results. All of the videos are there. They are sorted into playlists. You can look for our playlist on the see results Facebook page. And even more conveniently, it's on the YouTube channel. You can look for see results on YouTube or type in youtube.com forward slash C results. And again, under the playlist, you're gonna get all of our videos from season one. And of course, as we continue to create videos, uh, every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday from five to seven, we'll be adding these episodes as well. So what that means is you can look at our videos if you've missed them. You can look at our past videos. And these videos, they have questions and answers, all right? The answers are primarily given by the students. Who they, this is their favorite part. They love to call us, and we love to have them 
call us and help us to answer these questions. So if you're looking at the previous videos, when a question is put up, you can always pause the video if you're looking at the older ones and take a moment, try to answer the question. Hit play, you'll get a student's response. That can be very helpful at times because you know children tend to have a different way of seeing things sometimes. And if their response was wrong, of course, it would have been corrected on the program and therefore you will be able to judge that against your work, right? Another tool that we use to help in the reinforcement of what is done on the program is that we have a class on edmodo.com, all right? So all along since the beginning of the program in November of last year, we've been posting weekly quizzes in math and ELA, and we've also been giving creative writing assignments. Now, uh, with, the, with the end of the program, just two weeks before Ramadan, uh, we said that we'd continue giving quizzes, and we did continue to post quizzes um, on a time-by-time -time basis on the Edmodo page. All right, and you know, unfortunately, we had one or two instances of students, you know, who were a little bit disrespectful, and we had to remove them from the group. So parents, it wasn't a lot of students, but we don't want that type of behavior in the group at all, right? We have a zero tolerance policy towards it. So please, if you are going to have your kids participate in our Edmodo class, do monitor what it is they are doing, and we are going to be restructuring the class as a matter of fact. Um, up until this Friday, we have a creative writing assignment, which we will be reading from. We read the students' essays. We select some of them and read them every week. Of course, we won't have any to read on this week because we've, we've just rebooted the program here, but we'll be reading from next week. So when the deadline for those creative writing pieces pass on Friday uh, at midnight, we'll be making a new Edmodo class, all right? So those students who are already with us, the access code will be posted there, and they can just join our class, and they'll join our class. And those who were never with us before, you will be able to join that class as well, and the access code will be given on all of our social media platforms. Now, it used to be that you can just put in the access code, and you'll automatically be in the classroom. That is going to change as well, all right? Once you join our class now with this new class code, and even the one that is currently in place, you have to be approved, all right? So what happens is that students create accounts, maybe their parents have them, maybe they don't, and they forget their passwords and so on, and every week they're creating a new account, and those old accounts remain in the group, they take up space, and they, you know, they sort of clutter our database. We don't want that, all right? If you join our class, you're participating, please write down your username and password somewhere so that you won't forget it. And if you do forget it, Instagram and all via email and we can reset your password for you all right just give us a student name we will reset the password you can get back in and that way we won't have duplicate accounts again we had only about two or three instances of students who are disrespectful and we do not want it all right this is a you know a, a private venture um, supported by our sponsors supported here by the IBN TV network and we don't condone that sort of behavior whatsoever, all right? This, this is not something that is, um, that is, you know, just available for you to abuse. It's something that we're trying to do to benefit the nation, to help those, you know, who haven't got access to additional lessons. That was our initial um, plan when we formulated the program uh, in the early stages, but of course the COVID-19 came and then many students who all of them now have no access to traditional schooling also got on board. So the numbers expanded. And of course, with that, you're going to get all sorts of elements. So we want to make sure that we have these things under control. Parents, do your part, please. All right, teachers have been asking this of you even in school for many, many years. All right, please pay attention and take some interest in what your child is doing. We, we want them to be on, in the class doing our work. It's a sort of, sort of social media, so the children can interact, and let me tell you, the interactions are 99% beautiful interactions, all right? Students might be working on their homework. They, don't, they are not sure what to do. They are stuck. They take a picture of their homework. They put it there. Many students help them to answer the question. Ms. Nyla or myself come in afterwards and say, all right, that's the right answer, or if it wasn't the right answer, 
we'll, we'll identify the right answers, identify the wrong ones, or if no right answer is given, we also give it. Students also use it to share all sorts of art and craft and all sorts of creative and wonderful things that they are doing since their home, all right? And you know, the students, they comment on it and so on. We even have a student there who's, you know, at the SEA level, f fidgeting with making um, video games online, all right? So, and he's doing actually a pretty good job and he shares it with, with his um, fellow students there on Edmodo. And it's so much good stuff going on, we don't want people spoiling it, all right? So please pay attention to what your child is doing on the devices. That's why we said, when we give an assignment, it's best if you were to watch your child, you know, just monitor them while they're on the app, right? Because in, aside from getting up to mischief, maybe on edmodo.com, they can also go on all different sorts of apps, all different sorts of websites, while you are not monitoring them and get up to who knows what, all right? Remember, these are still quite young children, quite impressionable, and let's do our part to ensure that they are putting their education first, all right? That's what we are all about here on C results. All right, so look forward for that new class code coming up. We're gonna leave this classroom open until the end of the week so you can get your creative writing in, which might be read next week, either Tuesday or Thursday when we do our creative writing sessions. All right, so we have a lot of work to do still um, to get to the level that we want to be. We're gonna finish all those types of questions that we haven't yet looked at in the number strand in sections two and three, and then we're just gonna start doing practice papers from start to finish. So by the time SEA does come around, you all should be the most prepared class in SEA history, all right? I know that you're very anxious to write the exam and you're disappointed that you haven't been able to write the exam, but let's look at it in a positive light. You're getting some extra time and hopefully you're getting some help here from us and together we can help you to see the type of results that you would like to have, all right? That's why we've called the program C Results. So we have some questions to do, as I said, in the number strand from sections two and three and today we are gonna start back with some questions on fractions, decimals, and percentages. Of course, we've already done the easier types of questions in fractions, decimals, and percentages. And again, we refer you to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page where we have all of our previous videos. The YouTube channel has nice descriptions under the title of each video, so you can look in there. Um, the title will give you a hint to begin with, but there will be more specifics in the description as well, okay? Um, so these questions, the first couple of questions might be a bit easy, but we'll get into some more challenging ones today. So I'm gonna ask that our studio lines be shared with you and you can take a look at the question, you know, take a moment, make sure you have an approach to answer the question. And then, you know, we're gonna take your call and you will help us to answer these questions, good? So the first one, as I said, it's gonna be an easy one. A class has 40 students. There are 22 girls in the class. Express the number of boys in the class as a fraction. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hello, sir. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, sir, this is Javen. Hey, welcome back, Javen. Nice to have you with us once more. All right, so Javen, remember we are listening on the, on the phone and we're gonna lower the volume on the television, right? Javen? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So tell me what, is your, what are your thoughts for this question? So I would say 40 take away 22, which is 18 and 18 over 40 is nine over 20. Excellent, 18 over 40 is, 40 nine, over is nine over 20. All right, very good. So that's an easy one. Well done, Chevan. Yes, sir. All right, so let's just just review it, of course. You know, we have, might have some new viewers here today who may still have problems with fractions. So let's just analyze why this is the answer. So we know that the class in total has 40 students. Good. And there are 22 girls in the classroom. So we have to express the number of boys in the class as a fraction. So we are going to have to say... 40 and subtract the 22 girls to get the number of boys in the classroom. And that gives us 
18. Good. So now we have the number of boys. We can put that over the total number of students in the class. So we have here, remember this is our numerator. All right. Again, I'm just, I'm just doing these things for the benefit of our first time viewers today. All right. And we have the denominator. I hope that by the next time we do maths, of course, tomorrow we have English language arts and creative writing. And we have mathematics on Thursday after, well, before another creative writing session. You all go back and look at as many of our previous videos that you can if you are now joining us on see results. Good. So we have 18, we have 40. This is the number of boys. This is the number of students in the classroom. Now we learned that we always try to express our answer uh, in, uh, in the simplest manner that we can. So we're going to simplify or reduce this fraction to its lowest terms. So we have to look at both the numerator and the denominator and let's see what common factors they share. And then we're gonna cancel or divide both the numerator and denominator by that factor, good? So the number two can go into 18 nine times and the number two can go into 40 20 times. So we have nine over 20 and we have no other common factors here besides the number one. And if we divide nine by one and 20 by one, we're still gonna get nine and 20. Therefore, this answer here is said to be the fraction in its lowest terms, all right? So that again is just for the benefit of our new viewers who maybe didn't have that explained to them um, before, or maybe they did and they didn't understand it. So we are just here to reinforce, all right? So 9 over 20 is the answer for this question. Let's look at another question. Two-thirds of Jaden's stickers is equal to one-half of Jatiana's stickers. Jaden has a total of 24 stickers. How many stickers does Jatiana have? Good afternoon, Cola. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hello, sir. Hey, welcome back, Javen. Oh, you know it's me, sir? <laughs> I recognize your voice. Oh. Uh, Okay. So what are your thoughts here, Javen? So since they said two-thirds of Jaden's stickers are equal to one-half of Jati Jatiana's stickers, I would have to find two-thirds of 24, uh -huh. which is 16. All right. And what do we do next? Since they said um, two-thirds of Jaden's stickers are equal to one-half of Jatiana's stickers, I would have to see 16 multiplied by 2, which will give you 32 stickers. Excellent. So Jatiana has 32 stickers. stickers. Good work, Javan. Yes, yeah, sir. All right. So, guys, again, another easy one. Right, it's going to get more difficult very soon, but sometimes you do get some, you know, not super challenging questions in the section two of the paper. It, it happens. All right, so Jada, two thirds of Jaden's stickers is equal to one half of Jatiana's stickers. And Jaden has a total of 24 stickers. So the data that we have is the number of stickers that Jaden has, and we know some fractions here relating to this total here of 24. All right, we are told that two-thirds of Jaden's stickers is equal to one-half of Jatiana's. So if we find two-thirds of the 24 stickers that Jaden possesses, and we do that by fraction multiplication here, we are able to cross-cancel because 3 and 24 share the common factor of 3. So we say 3 into 3, 1. 3 into 24 is 8. And now we can multiply numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator, 2 by 8 is equal to 16, and 1 by 1 is equal to 1. Any number divided by 1 is itself. All right, so we have the number 16. So 2 thirds of Jaden's stickers is 16. And Jatiana, well, that is equal to 1 half of Jatiana's stickers. So if 1 half of Jatiana's stickers is equal to 16, that means in total she has double that amount because 2 halves make 1 whole. Good? So we have to multiply 16 by 2, and we get a total of 32 stickers for Chatiana. Hope that one is clear. So let's look at 
another question, and this is a question involving decimals, and this one might be a bit more challenging, right? Alison had a sum of money. She kept 0 0.25 of it and divided the rest equally among her five children. What decimal fraction of the sum of money did each child receive? So good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Caller, good afternoon. All right, so you all at home, you can take this moment here to work it out. If you think you know the strategy, feel free to give us a call. Right, so this person has a sum of money. She kept 0.25 and divided the rest equally among her five children. What decimal fraction Hello, is each received? Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results. Good afternoon, sir. And who am I speaking with? You speak in okay, welcome to our program. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this question here? Speak again, but sometimes I work it out, please. Sure, no problem. All right, so I'm just going to be talking to our audience while you do that. Okay. And right, so we have a sum of money. We actually don't know what the sum of money is. We just know that this person kept 0 0.25 of it and divided the rest equally among her five children. So what decimal fraction of the sum of money did each child receive? Okay, so to be clear, the 0 0.25 does not mean that she kept 25 cents. All right, we sh she kept 0 0.25 of a sum of money. We don't know what exactly the sum of money is, but we know the decimal fraction of it that she kept. All right, so she kept 0 0.25 of it and divided the rest equally among how many children? Among five children. So what decimal fraction of the sum of money did each child receive? So how are you doing there, Kola? So I'm kind of stuck. You're kind of stuck? Yes, sir. All right, no problem. So let's have a chat, right? Thank you. Okay, what does 0 0.25 mean? 0 0.25 is the decimal fraction of, what, of one quarter. Right, so she kept, in other words, she kept one quarter of the money, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So if she kept one quarter, that means how much money did she divide among her five children? as a decimal fraction. She divided a quarter of her money to five of her children. Okay, no, she kept a quarter. So what, what, are, what is left if she takes a quarter for herself? Oh. What would be left of Zero the point sum seven of money? Five. Zero point? Zero point seven five. Excellent. Zero point seven five. Because the whole sum of money will be one, not so? Yes. yes. And she, she kept zero point Two five, right? So that means there is That's zero point seven five of the money left, right? That yes. decimal fraction of the money left. Now yes. she's dividing this zero point seven five equally among how many children? Among five children. Among five children. So what do we have to do with this zero point seven five now? She has to divide that among our five children by dividing 0 0.75 by 5. Excellent. So take a moment and, and try to work out that for me. And you, you guys at home watching, you have to do the same, right? So again, I'll exp explain up to this point while our caller attempts to do this working. So the entirety of the money is represented by one or one whole, right? That's the entire sum of the money. She kept 0 0.25 of it. Or, in other words, she kept one quarter of it. But the question wants an answer in a decimal fraction. That's why we're leaving it as a decimal, good? So if she keeps 0 0.25, that means she has 0.75 left to share among five children. And she does so equally. Because she shares it equally, we can just simply divide 0 0.75 by 5. And then we'll have the decimal fraction that each child receives. So, making some progress there, Kola? So, my is. All right.
Yeah. All right. She gave us. She gave each child fifteen dollars. All right. She gave each child fifteen dollars. All right. Good. So you're almost there. All right. So do we actually have to divide zero point seven five by five? So I'm assuming you carry the decimal point two places to the right. So you'll have seventy five instead of zero point seven five. Right. So you divide. 75 by 5. Good? Yes, sir. All right. So let's see what happens when we do that. We're going to get 15, right? Yes, sir. Good. But remember, we moved the decimal point two places to the right. Yes. So now we have to move that decimal place back two places to the left. To the left. So each child will receive 0. Point one, one five, five of the sum of money, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much for being so brave and staying with us, right? Thank you, sir. Okay. Take care. All right. So this is see results in action. Dear viewers, especially those new viewers, we are not afraid of fumbling here. All right. But your fumble means that somebody at home will have the same misconception that you have. All right, and unlike in a physical classroom where you might be ashamed to put your hand up, you are at home on your tablet, on your phone, by your TV, by yourself, or with your parents, hopefully, or elder siblings, somebody, if they're available to watch with you, right? And you make a mistake, nobody's going to see you, all right? If you don't know at home as well, nobody's going to know, and that's fine, all right? Even if someone could see you, even if people knew who you are and that, that you have this misconception, that's okay, all right? It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to not be sure. That's how we learn. But the good thing is this makes it easier for you to ask questions without that fear being there, good? So we, uh, we understand that 0 0.75 of the sum of money is left. We don't know how much money we, this Allison has. We just know the decimal fractions of the money that we are dealing with, good? So that's why he was a little bit mistaken there in saying, Fifteen dollars. All right. It's not fifteen dollars. It's not even fifteen cents. It's zero point one five of the sum of money that's going to each child. All right. So, in dividing this zero point seven five into five equal parts to make it easier, we just change the point seven five into seventy five by moving our decimal point two places to the right, and we now divide five into seventy five. And that gave us 15. So we can move our decimal point back two places to the left. And we'll get 0 0.15 being the decimal fraction that each child receives. Good? So that is our answer for this question. And I hope that that was of benefit to everybody at home. I know this one was a little trickier one compared to the first two. Good? So let's look at another question here. Oranges were packed in boxes of 90. There were five packed boxes. One-sixth of the oranges were rotten. How many oranges were not rotten? So that is our question. Good afternoon, Kuala. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Hello, and who am I speaking with? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And Yan. Welcome, Andian. So, Andian, you got through today? Are you hearing me? Hello? Okay, so I believe that was Andian from our Edmodo class who was messaging all week. Well, not all week, but for the last couple of days, saying how excited she was to get onto the program. So, Andian, if we lost you there, please do try again. And callers, please be, be aware that you need to mute the television and listen to the call over the phone, all right? That way we won't get feedback and you will be able to hear us in sync. All right, so do I have another caller on the line? Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. And who am I speaking with? This is Jonathan Sinan, and I, and I am very happy to be back. Welcome back, Jonathan, and we are very happy to have you back as well. So Jonathan has been working with us all through the seven weeks that we were off air, all right, as we broke for Ramadan and came back. Jonathan never stopped working 
Thank you so much for sticking with us, Jonathan. So, Jonathan, what are your, your thoughts for this question? Okay, sir. So, the question is saying oranges were packed in a box of 90, and there were five packed boxes. Mm -hmm. So, what I am going to do now is say 90 multiplied by five to know how much is the total of oranges. Very good. So, I'm just working it out, working it out now. All right. And my answer is 450 oranges total. Excellent. 450 oranges total. What is yeah. the next step? And now, they say, the question is saying, one-sixth of the oranges are, were, were rotten. How many oranges were not rotten? Yes. So, now I am multiplying 450 over one by one-sixth. All right. So I'm just open it out now, sir. Okay. And I got 75 rotten oranges. 75 rotten oranges? Right. Yes. So now I am going to take away that 75 rotten oranges from 450 oranges to see how much, how much good oranges they are. Okay, no problem. And my answer is 375 good oranges. Excellent work, Jonathan. You are absolutely correct. Thank you, sir. And thank you so much for calling. All right. So Jonathan's approach there was to work out the number of rotten oranges and then subtract that from the number of the total number of oranges. And that way he gets the number of oranges that are not rotten. All right, so those are 375 oranges, and that is quite correct, good? But there's an alternate solution to this problem, all right? And we're just going to discuss that very briefly. So again, the oranges were packed in boxes of 90. That means each box has 90 oranges in it, okay? There were five packed boxes, so we have five boxes of 90 oranges, that's how we were able to say that there are 450 oranges in total. And we know that one-sixth of the oranges are rotten. How many oranges were not rotten? So Jonathan's approach was to work out the number of rotten oranges, which he got to be 75 rotten oranges. And then he subtracted that from the total number of oranges to get those that were not rotten. Good? But there's one other way that we could have done this. If we knew that one-sixth of the oranges are rotten, that leaves us with five-sixths of the oranges being not rotten. Good, because we can convert this one here, which is the total oranges that we have, into a fraction with the same denominator, right? So the equivalent fraction for one in sixths is six over six. So we get five-sixths of the oranges being not rotten. Good? Not rotten, which is what was requested of us. And now we can multiply five over six by 450 over one. And we're going to get five multiplied by 75. And that would give us our same 375 oranges being not rotten. Good? So instead of working out one-sixth of the number of oranges and then subtracting it from the total number of oranges, we can just multiply the fraction that is left when we remove the rotten oranges by the total number of oranges and get to our answer even quicker. But both, both approaches are valid and both would be awarded the same number of marks. All right, so well done, Jonathan, and this was an alternate way to solve our problem. So here we have another question here. This one is a bit tricky as well. Allianz monthly salary is $5,382, which is equal to 60% of Andean's monthly salary. Andean, who just called us, Andean, I hope you get through with us before the end of today. 
and Yan gives 10% of her salary each month to charity, how much money does she give to charity? All right, so this is a sort of tricky one. Let's see who can help us with it. Good afternoon, Kuala. Welcome to Series Outs on IBN TV. How much money Hello? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, hi, good afternoon. And who am I speaking with? Kuala, welcome to Series Outs on IBN TV. Um, Alex. Hello? Welcome, Alex. So, Alex, can I ask you please to just turn the volume off on the television and listen to us on the phone, please? All right, so once you've done that, Alex, please give us your thoughts for this question. Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Have you, did you get a chance to read the question? I'm reading it right now. Okay. okay, no problem. Yes, sir, I just said it. All right. So what, what do you think we have to do here? I think that we have to multiply... 60% by 5,382. Ah, All right. And why would you be doing that? To find Andy's monthly salary. All right. So here's, here's what, right? This okay. is Allianz's total monthly salary here. $5,382, right? Yes, sir. But that is equal to 60% of Andy Ann's monthly salary, right? Yes, sir. So it isn't that Andy Ann gets 60% of $5,382, right? That's yes, not what sir. it's saying. It's saying that $5,382 is equal to 60% of Andy Ann's monthly salary. You understand yes. the difference there? So yes, that means sir. that Andy Ann's monthly salary Will it be more than 5,382 or will it be less? More. More, right? Yes, and sir. If we multiply 60% by 5,382, we'll get a smaller number, not so? Yes, sir. Right. So, okay. I'm going to give you credit still for thinking about multiplying by the percentage. All right? Okay, sir. Like I said, this one is a tricky one. Yes, sir. Now... So we know that 60% of Andy Ann's salary is $5,382. Yes. And she gives how much of her salary each month to charity? Yes, sir. She gives 10% of her salary each month to? Charity. Right. So we okay. want to know how much money she gives to charity, or in other words, how much is 10% of Andy Ann's Salary. salary. Very good. Now, we know what 60% of Andy Ann's salary is, don't we? Yes, sir. Right. Now, what is the relationship between 60% and 10%? Can you tell me? It, it has percentage. It is a percent. Right. But 60%, mm -hmm. is it more than 10%? Less than 10%? Equal to 10%? 60 is more than 10%. By how much? 50. By 50. Or in terms of times, how many times more than 60% than 10% is 60%? Sorry. Well, could you please repeat? Uh, I didn't hear. Okay. How many times more than 10% mm -hmm. is 60%? Oh, six. Six. Right? So yeah. I have here 60% and I want to get 10%. So what do I have to do to get this 60% down to 10%? I would have to divide um, 5,382 by 6. Excellent. And that will give me 10% of Andy Ann's mm -hmm. salary. Money, sorry, yeah. Right? So I'm giving you an opportunity now to work that out for me. Good? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir, I have the answer. What is it? 
972. All right, that was very speedy, but yes, that I believe that that is the answer. I'm going to work it out now on the screen as well, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so you understand how we got to that 972? Yes, sir. All right, thank you so much for your call, Alex. All right, so this one, I know this one is a lot to wrap your mind around, so we're going to go it over once more, right? Allianz monthly salary is $5,382, which is equal to 60% of Allianz monthly salary. Good? 60% of Allianz salary is not equal to Allianz monthly salary. That's not what it's saying. It's saying that Allianz total salary of $5,382 is equal to 60% of Allianz monthly salary. And the aunt gives 10% of her salary each month to charity. How much money does she give to charity? So we know that $5,382 is 60% of Andy Ann's salary. Good. And making the connection here between the 10% and the 60%. Good. We can see that 10% would be $5,382 divided by six because 60 percent is six times more than 10 percent all right i know some of the parents at home might be thinking okay we can divide 5382 by 60 and we'll get one percent and then we can multiply one percent by a hundred that is also correct but we are looking here remember this is a timed exam so we want to move as quickly as possible all right there's a lot of questions in the sea paper some of them are very challenging, all right? As we know, every year, even grown up, sometimes they get a little bit daunted by the paper, but not our students, right? Our students are going to be quite prepared. So 60 is six times more than 10. So if we divide this by six, we're gonna get, instantly we're gonna get 10% of what Andy and salary is, good? So in other words now, we have 5,382, and we are dividing that by 6. All right, and I hope that everyone at home took the time to work this question out. All right, so Alex said the answer was 972, I think he said. So we're working that out right now, okay? And the answer is $897. All right, $897. So I think the answer that Alex gave us there was wrong. All right, I was just recalling from earlier when I worked it out, and it sounded familiar, but this is in fact our answer here. All right, 6 into 53, 8, 8, 6 is our 48. Then we subtract. And we get five, bring down the eight. Nine sixes are 54. Good, we get four from that, bring down the two. And seven sixes are 42. So the answer is actually $897 and not the value that Alex said before, unless that is what Alex said, right? Uh, I'm not 100% sure right now. But this is our answer, guys. So that is how we arrive at this particular solution and I hope that you all understood. So here we have another question where we have to calculate. Good. Now this is something that we've yet to do on the program, um, adding and subtracting mixed numbers. All right, this can come in the second section of the paper, um, the number of the, the number questions. Good. So what do we need to know? We already have some idea about how to subtract uh, proper fractions from each other. So let's just recap what we need to do here now when we have a mixed number situation. So what we want to do is to find equivalent fractions for the proper fractions using the lowest 
common multiple of their denominators. Good? We subtract the whole numbers, subtract the proper fractions, and we combine the whole number with the proper fraction. So I'm sure that we have many standard four and five students here who can do this already. So let's give them a chance and then we'll give you the answer. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. And who am I speaking with? This is Jonathan Sinanan again. Welcome back, Jonathan Sinanan. So Jonathan, what are your thoughts for this question here? Hello? Yes, Jonathan, what are your thoughts for this question here? Okay. So, the way I just work this is uh -huh. I will turn it and turn the both fractions into impro improper fractions. All right, that's another valid approach. So, so talk me through it. Yes, so I am moving it out right now. Okay, good. So, the the first one is mm -hmm. 38 over 5. All right. Don't worry, viewers. I will tell you how we got that very shortly. And 4 and 7 over 15 is 67 over 15. 67 over 15. All right. I am with you so far. No. I am going to do the LCM method, which is, so 5 to 10 go to 15, and 15 go going to 15. Yes. So the LCM is 15. Yeah. And 5 into 15 is 3. And 3 multiplied by 38. Um, I am now going to work that out. All right. is 114. So you're saying you're multiplying by 3 to get this, this fraction as an equivalent with a denominator of 15, right? Yes. Okay. And what did you say 38 by 3 was? 114. Excellent. So you have 114 over... Over 15. Over 15. Well done. What and, next? And 15 can go into 15 one time. Mm -hmm. So you do not have to multiply that. You All just right. have to put 67 taken away from 114. Okay. So I'm going to take that away now, sir. No problem. And I got 47 over 15. Very good. 47 and, over 15. And now I am going to change that to an improper fraction as well. All right. No, sorry. Um, a mixed number. <laughs> yes, a mixed number. My answer is 3 and 2 fifths. 3 and... 2 over 15, sorry. <laughs> All right, excellent. 3 and 2 over 15. Yes. Very well done, Jonathan. This is absolutely correct. And that is very fine work there. All right. Thank you, thank you so much for calling, Jonathan. So, viewers, I know a lot of you will be familiar with this method as well. And by the way, we've learned all about equivalent fractions, comparing fractions, reducing fractions, how to go from mixed number to improper fraction, improper fraction to mixed number. We've done that all um, already on the program. So you can go to our YouTube channel, as we said, and look up our videos on fractions. Look at all the videos on fractions and you'll get all of those uh, different strategies. So Jonathan said that he's going to convert these mixed numbers into improper fractions. And of course, we learn to do that on the program. But we are just going to recap. Again, we expect that some of you would be very new today. And even though you already did it in school, um, we like to give you know, our, our perspective. So we multiply the whole number by the denominator. So we say 7 multiplied by 5, which gives us 35. 
and now we have to add that to the numerator and then we'll get 38 and we put it all over the denominator of 5. And then we do the same here for 4 and 7 over 15. We say 4 multiplied by 15, which is 60, and we add 60 to 7. We're going to get 67 over 15. And now we can't simply subtract one from the other. Why? Because they have different denominators. We can't subtract fractions directly from each other if they have different denominators. So Jonathan looked at 5 and 15, and he said that they have the lowest common multiple of 15. Good? If I were to write the multiples of 5 and write the multiples of 15, I don't have to go very far to see what the lowest common one or the lowest one that is the same is for 5 and 15, right? It's actually the number 15 itself. So now, when I'm converting 38 on 5 to an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 15, because I have to multiply the denominator by 3, I also have to multiply the numerator by 3. So I do that. Well, Jonathan did that, as a matter of fact, and he's, he got 114 over 15, which is quite correct. Good. And we have here now 67 over 15. We don't have to change that. Good because it's already in a denominator of 15, right? If the both denominators had a different um, LCM, which was a totally different value to both of them, then we'd have to convert both to that number, all right? For instance, if our numerate denominators were two and three, we'd have to get the lowest common multiple of six. So we'd multiply the fraction with two as the den denominator by three, and the fraction with three as the denominator by two, all right? But because the LCM here is already one of our denominators in the problem. We only have to convert one of them. All right, so we have 114 over 15, subtract 67 over 15. Now that we have the same denominators, we can just subtract the numerators as we would subtract any regular numbers, right? And we'll get 47. We put that over the denominator, which is 15. And when we have these improper fractions, it's always best to convert them to mixed numbers at this level. So we're going to say that 15 can go into 47 three times. 15 by 3 is 45. And we'll put the remainder, which is 2, over the denominator of 15. And again, if you are rusty on this, if this has bothered you for a long time, go and look at our videos, please, on our YouTube channel or even on our Facebook page after this live has ended or after the program has ended on television and you can brush up on that so what i wanted to say was there was or there is another method that we could have employed here which is a bit simpler for some students and though um, you may not always be able to use this especially in the secondary level because of the way that they make some of the fractions. For example, the proper fraction in the second mixed number could have been bigger, right, than three fifths. But for SEA, you won't really find that. So you can actually just go ahead and employ this method, all right? So we multiply the whole, the, sorry, we subtract the whole numbers. So we get seven, subtract four is equal to three so that gives us our whole number and now we can subtract our fractions from each other so we have three fifths take away seven fifteenths and we have to do the same thing that Jonathan did all right we have two fractions here with different denominators so we're going to have to find the LCM which is still 15 and now we have to convert three fifths to a fraction with 15 as denominator all right, so I'll just rewrite that. And we have three fifths subtract seven fifteenths. So we multiply both the denominator and the numerator by three, and we'll get nine over 15 subtract seven over 15, which gives us two over 15. And we put that together with this whole number that we have up here, 
and we get the same answer of 3 and 2 fifteenths, and that is the same answer that Jonathan got. All right? So the next question has to do with the division of mixed numbers, and I'm just going to highlight for you the steps that we use in this particular problem or this, this type of problem uh, because we won't really have time to answer this one completely. So what we have to do in a situation like this, well, we, there's one or two more steps than the multiplication of mixed numbers. All right, so I'm just going to highlight first what we do with the multiplication. So for the multiplication, we have to convert any mixed numbers into improper fractions. Good? Then we, we state the problem as the improper fraction multiplied by another improper fraction. We cross cancel, if possible, once there are common factors. And that's optional, as we will see on Thursday when we continue. Good, but it's always easier, in my opinion, to cross multiply where you, where you can and then continue from there. And then once you have done that, you multiply the numerators and the denominators and you simplify, reduce, or convert at the end to give the answer in the best possible format. And we are going to do this exercise on Thursday uh, when we continue, when we pick up from here. And then when it's a division problem now, you just have, you have to do two, two things a little bit differently. Or at the beginning, you're going to um, convert any mixed numbers, as we said, into improper fractions. We change the divide sign into a multiply and we flip or invert the second fraction. And then we would proceed as we would for our multiplication problem, cross canceling if possible, multiplying numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator, simplifying and canceling and converting and so on as appropriate. Good? So don't worry, I'll, I'll repeat this on Thursday when we do mathematics again. We're going to work through these drills and we'll get to the bottom of this question that has come up on our paper. All right, so please don't forget if you're not a member of our Edmodo class as yet. Yes, we are going to be creating a new class, but we have an SCA creative writing assignment due um, on Friday at 11.59 p.m., which will be read. Some of your submissions will be read next week. So if you want to get, get in on that, you can join our class. The class code is 6KJQ3Y. I believe we have a graphic there to put up on the screen. So you go to edmodo.com or you download the app, enter this code. You will be put on a waiting list. I will approve you um, by tomorrow morning at latest. And you can complete that creative writing assignment and we'll give you further updates on the new class for this extra added bonus to season one here as we're on the home stretch for SEA. All right, so don't go anywhere. We're going to be joined in a couple minutes by Ms. Nyla, who will be taking us through English language arts for today. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to all new viewers, and we hope to see you tomorrow again. Don't go anywhere. Ms. Nyla will be back shortly. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum. We care about our heroes on the front line in our hospitals who are going above and beyond the call of duty. We salute their dedication and wish to extend our appreciation for their service. We also recognize the vulnerable in our society and provide support to those in need by introducing a label fundraising initiative in partnership with Oasis Water. Everyone can do their part by joining the fight with the simple act of purchasing an Oasis Water with a specially marked red label. Every purchase will go towards contributing to a product donation fund delivered directly to the frontline staff in our hospitals through the charitable organizations that we have aligned with.
Our product donation will be used in the preparation of food hampers that will be distributed to the many families and communities in need who have been severely impacted by this crisis. A little bit goes a long way in this fight. Sip and support today. Help us contribute to those who have given so much back to us through their work on the front lines. Lend of your support as we provide food relief to those families and communities in need. Learn more about this Oasis Cares initiative at www.myoasiswater.com. Attention all bakers, doubles vendors, and roti makers. Try our high-quality unbleached bromate-free all-purpose and baker's flour. Low price and conveniently packaged in 2 pounds, 2 kg, 10 kg, and 25 kg bags. For wholesale and retail prices, contact Shikleisha Limited, 665-3336, or visit us at Warrenville, Canupia. Shikleisha Limited, quality you can trust. Shopping on the website at shopsmj.com is tailor-made to be accessible and easy to use. It's especially helpful in these trying times, but it's also a time saver in general. They have impeccable customer service with a fully equipped online team of friendly and efficient staff who are more than happy to assist. The delivery service is also reliable and punctual. The ordering process couldn't be made simpler. Just visit the shopsmj.com website, create a username and password, select the products you wish to order, and wait for the delivery drop-off. It's simple, it's easy, and relevant for the times. Please remember to... Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, guys. Welcome back to Sea Results. I just want to say thank you all so much for joining us today or rejoining us as a matter of fact. I'm Miss Naila, and for this session, we are going to start with English language arts. But I must welcome all of our new viewers and our existing loyal viewers, right? And those students who have been with us through that seven weeks that we were off air during that Ramadan period. Right, uh, we had work posted for you and you remained engaged and we want to say thank you for that and welcome back. Um, to our viewers on our Facebook live stream, welcome guys. And I do hope that uh, you'll share this stream with your friends and your families. You know, it can benefit anyone or any child potentially writing the SE exam this year or of course coming up uh, next year. Right, so we are still not sure when the SE exam is, probably October, but we will wait uh, for that official word. Until then, we are continuing with our work. Now, we just had Sir Ijaz with mathematics, right? Um, now, we're going to start e ELA, just as I said. Uh, but for ELA, we are going to actually be doing past papers only. Well, not only past papers, but practice papers, rather. So, previously, when we just started, which was in last November, we started with content. So, we looked at, you know, all the rules we needed for spelling and so on. Now, if you look at the breakdown of the paper, it's such that it includes two sections. Section one, which is spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Now, how we approach this, we looked at the spelling rules, right? So everything you needed to know about spelling and how to correct spelling, how to identify a spelling error, you know, um, what are some of the clues to look at, some of the common mistakes, for example, with a soft C and a hard C, or something as simple as that, right? Or even mispronunciation, which leads to that incorrect spelling. So all of that is something that we looked at already and how to improve upon it. Similarly with punctuation, now punctuation and capitalization, it's a little bit longer where we looked at, you know, the rules of punctuation, you know, how to use punctuation in writing. So not only did we look at, you know, you know what is a full stop or how to use a colon or probably a comma or apostrophe, any of those, 
right? We also looked at examples, many, many examples, and of course, practice tests, which allowed you, um, our callers, you know, who so enjoy calling us, right? And helping us to answer these questions or identify errors and all of those things, how to use your punctuation in writing. Of course, that also benefits you in creative writing, which I will talk a little bit on a little later on in the show, right? Um, for our grammar session, how we looked at it is such that, you know, grammar has so many rules, right? So there uh, were approximately 17 different rules that we looked at, you know, um, when you are writing sentences, how to go about it. Now, don't feel, you know, for our new viewers, that is, if you are just joining us, I don't want you guys to be left out. Now, all of this content and all of this hard work and dedication um, from our students and all these practice tests are available on our YouTube channel, right? So in each of these videos, you will find um, work that was done on the program, you know, for each topic. So it is listed actually topic by topic. So it's very easy for you to find. And of course, you can also find us on our Facebook page. That is our C results page, right? So, you know, go ahead and take five minutes out of your day. Let's scroll through those videos, you know, look at those topics or, and that content areas that probably give you some extra, you know, difficulty. You want to go back, spend some extra time on it. Now, here's the benefit of um, having SEA exam pushed back. You know, some of us, you know, early in the year probably had some difficulty and we were not able to complete um, all of the topics needed, right? And you maybe even have some difficulty, you know, with comprehension skills, for example, you know, answering questions or poetry, you know, looking at figurative devices, all of those things. Now, just head back to our YouTube channel and, you know, look at those videos and I promise you that's going to help you a lot. Now, since we are going to be moving on with only practice papers, I just want to point out to you, um, as we go along with these practice papers, if um, any new topic do arise, we will look at it, right? Um, so don't be alarmed if any revision is necessary, if somebody asks us uh, to review a topic, probably something that confuses you a bit, you know, no matter how many times you try, you're still having problems, that is fine, we will do that, right? So as we go along, we're going to see how we can um, best help you guys improve and get ready for that SE exam. Now, just to elaborate a little more on what we covered, we are on to section two with comprehension, poetry, and that graphic. Now, we looked at um, a variety of ways, you know, how to approach um, questions and how to answer questions. Comprehension is, a, is quite difficult, actually, for a lot of students. They have difficulty answering. Some of you have difficulty understanding the comprehension of the poem itself, right? Whereas the graphic is a little more simple, right? And those marks are a little bit easier um, to acquire. So we focus a lot of our attention on comprehension and poetry skills. They are quite similar when you are answering those questions. And so if you know you're still having a little bit of trouble with it, don't worry. That's why we're doing some extra practice test papers. And I do believe, you know, that's one of the best ways to help you, um, you know, to improve your skills, right? Through practice. So let's get started. Um, so it's I'm just going to go through the instructions for the ELA paper, just as you would see on the day of SE exam, refresh your minds a bit, right? So there are two sections in this test with a total of 43 questions. You have 75 minutes for this test, right? Section one, just as I said, which comprises of spelling, uh, punctuation, and capitalization, and grammar has 18 questions. Section two with comprehension, poetry, and your graphic has 25 questions. You have to answer all questions. Please, guys, I do encourage you to always attempt um, all questions. Please do not leave any question blank, right? That, uh, that may mean that you can lose a mark or two, even up to five, right? Which will be very difficult for you. So please try your best. Work carefully, but do not spend too much time on any one question. As we always reiterate, if you're having difficulty with one question, just skip that. Go on to your other questions and that last 10 minutes you have to uh, go over your paper, make sure and complete that question or at least try your absolute best. So we are going on to the spelling, uh, which is in section one of the paper, as we just mentioned. First task, right? So spelling now, um, you know, as we have started or have, as you have started from primary school with infants, you start with spelling. Right, something simple as the silent e words, right, to add an ing, or all those um, grammatical rules with changing of the spelling and so on. 
here's a chance for you, you know, how they are going to test you on that spelling. So every week you may get a weekly test at school, right? But this is how it's going to come for the SE exam, right? Um, it's actually with the section is with 12 marks. So you are given two marks for each line. So you have to underline the error and then you have to give us the correct spelling. So we're going to open up the lines. Uh, we're going to read this passage and then we're going to take some calls to help us um, identify the errors and then of course give us the correction to these. So let's just go ahead and read this together and then we'll take some calls. Raquel hastily stuffed the laundry into the washing machine, turned on the machine and ran to the television. Her favorite show had started. After being engrossed for some time, she heard her mother screaming. She jumped. The house was flooded with soapy water. Just a reminder, guys, uh, when you are doing this on your own, I do encourage you, read it as many times as you like or as many times as needed, right? Here, we are only reading it once for the sake of time, but uh, you, I do encourage you to read it at least two times, right? Look at those, look at each line very carefully. It's very easy to miss um, your error in this case. And we do have a call on the line, so let's take this call to help us with line one. Good evening. Welcome to See Results. Good afternoon. Hi, good evening. Welcome. Who am I speaking to? Javen. Hi, Javen. How are you? I am fine, miss. Okay, great. Nice to have you with us, Javen. So we are on to the first, yeah. first line or number one. Raquel hastily stuffed the laundry into the... So you have to identify the error and then you have to give me the correct spelling, okay? So I think the error is hastily. Okay. And it is spelled as H A S T I L Y. Very good. All right, H A S T I L Y. Okay, great job. Thank you so much for calling. Yes, right. miss. Okay, so um, we are going to complete the six questions and then we are going to look at each line carefully just to refresh our minds how we arrived at the correction. All right, we have another caller. Good evening. Welcome to See Results. Hi, good evening, caller. Caller, are you there? Okay, I'm just going to hold on a couple of seconds for another call. Um, I just want to remind you guys, if you are calling, please remember to lower the volume Hello. on your cell phone. Hi, good evening. Welcome to See Results. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, who am I speaking with? Um, Alex. Nice to have you with us. So help us with line two. Yes, miss. Okay, so we're just going to zoom on that for you. And, right, so give me the error and your correction. Oh, okay, my error is machine. Machine, right? Which, which mm -hmm. machine? First or second? First. First, great. And what should it be? M A C H. Yeah. I-N-E. Okay, great job. Thank you for calling. Yes, right, sir. so this one was a bit of a giveaway, but that's fine, right? It can happen. Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to See Results. Hi, good evening, caller. Hello, good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Jonathan Sanonan. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? I am fine. Okay, Jonathan. Number three. Okay. So number three is television. Instead of Z, it must have a S. Okay, so spell that for me. T E L E. Yeah. D I S I O N. Okay, thank you so much, Jonathan, for calling. All right, so great job so far to all our callers. Good evening, welcome to C Results. Hello? Hi, good evening, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Who am I speaking um, with? I'm Josiah Seabrook. Nice to have you with us, Josiah. So number four, what mm -hmm. is the error in this line? Mm -hmm. She heard, she heard screaming. Okay, so it's the line right above that. We are on line four, where we okay. have started full stop after being engrossed for some time. Are you seeing that line? Start, oh yes, I am. Okay. Started after being engrossed for some time. The mistake I would I would I would say is engrossed. Right. Okay. Correct. And how should it be spelled? E N G R O S S E D. Excellent job. Thank, Thank you, you for calling. Okay. 
Right, and our final, actually, we're not on the final, but number five. Good evening, welcome to C Results. Yes. Hi, who am I, who am I speaking with? Hi, Miss um, Alika. Nice to have you with us. So can you help us with number five? For number five, the arise hood. Hood? What is wrong with hood? This hood? Hood, hood is missing. A, A between E and R. Okay, but do you know this word hood here? H-E-R-D? Yes. Okay. What does that word mean? Do you mind telling me? That word means to be to, like, say, hear something. Are you sure? Which one? H E A R D or H E R D? H E A R D. Okay, and what about H E R D? So it's like a, like animals. Like a collective noun, right? Yeah. Okay, great job. Thanks for calling. Thank you. All right, but we will come back to number five for a little further discussion. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi. Good evening, caller. Okay, I'm not hearing this call, so I'm going to hold off another call. Good evening, welcome to See Results. Hi, good Hi. afternoon. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Alex again. Okay, Alex, so help us with number six. Yes, miss. So, ma the error in number six is soapy. Okay, what is wrong with soapy? It this shouldn't have a E between P and Y. Right, so it should be. Can you spell that for me? S O A P Y. Okay, great job. Thank you for calling. All right, I'm just going to rewrite this quickly. Right, and I'm just going to pause on calls for just a minute and let's just go through this passage to help us understand a bit better what's happening. Right, so we had, all the errors identified are actually correct, right? So let's just go to the correction. Hastily, right, instead of that Y, or you drop the Y rather, right, or change the Y to I and add LY. It's a spelling change, right, when you are, when you have to add that LY to that word, right, your adverb form of the verb. So when we were looking at changes to spelling, we looked at, you know, dropping the Y, doubling the last letter, um, you know, just using a single D and all of those things, right? Or even when you're using the present continuous tense and you have to double the consonant letter and all of those rules. As simple rules we have been learning all along our primary school life, right? And now it's time for us to apply it. So we simply change the Y to I and, add, sorry, add L-Y. So the word itself, H-S-T, is actually H-A-S-T-Y. Okay, so please know that. Um, second line, machine. Right, it's given away, just as I pointed out earlier, right, the correct spelling of the word machine is actually with a C and not an S. So this can be a pronunciation error, right? Now, it's easy for you to get confused here and actually put your correction using the S because there, there is the word machine or the word machine here appears twice in this line. So you have to know the correct spelling of the word machine, right? So you just know it's a C rather than an S. And television, again, pronunciation, that S sound can confuse so many of us. So it's something that you have to know. It's one of, one of those words that you have to know how to spell. And I do trust that you know how to spell the word television. We spend quite a lot of our time, right, um, looking at television. Engrossed, right, um, your prefix here, you have to know which correct prefix to use. And that is one of the other things that we came across with spelling. Right, addition of prefixes and suffixes changes the spelling of your words. Right, uh, so be careful with that. Hood, we pointed out this hood, H E R D, is actually a collective noun, uh, like a herd of cattle. Right, so, um, so that is the incorrect form of the word here. We actually want to say or spell H E A R D. And lastly, the word soapy. Simply, uh, soapy isn't spelled with an E. Right, so that's just a simple mistake, a commonly misspelled word uh, we refer to it as. So again, you just have to know how to spell the word soapy. And if you're at home and you're doing this exercise with us and you got all correct, congratulations, you just earned 12 marks, the first 12 marks in your SCA paper. Right, um, I just want to mention that, of course, we know that 
these practice papers vary. Sometimes you might get some very easy um, spelling challenges or grammar, punctuation, right? But sometimes, again, it might be a bit difficult. We don't know which way it's going to turn, so it's great to be prepared either way. Right? It's more or less the same rules we always come across. So the idea is to be, become familiar um, with all these rules, um, with spelling and, of course, punctuation and all of those. All right, let's move on. And here I just had the correction for you, but since we did that already, I will not refer to this again. All right, so we're going to move on to our task two in our section one, still punctuation and capitalization. So some punctuation marks and capital letters have been left out in the passage below. There is one error in every line, insert the missing punctuation mark or capital letter. Right? So this task is actually worth only six marks because here you only have to insert the missing punctuation mark or capital letter. I just want to remind you guys, where do we insert this punctuation or capital letter? Um, not to the side actually, so it's not here where the numbers are, so please do not make that mistake. So for example, if I'm required to put a full stop here, right, after the word one requires a full stop, then I'm, I must put my punctuation mark here next to the word. Similarly with a, a comma or a full stop, a question mark, any of those, not to the side here, right? The examiner is not going to know where that uh, full stop is actually supposed to be. So be very careful with that. All right, so let's just go on. We're going to read this again, and then I'm going to take some calls to help us. So have you heard about the Paralympic Games? Differently abled athletes from around the world compete in sports such as tennis, badminton, and swimming. Rachel Marshall, Nayosha Keane, and Akeem Stewart have all won medals for our country, Trinidad and Tobago. All right, so the lines are open once more. Um, you, what you can do when you can read a line actually and right after the word or next to the word, you can tell me uh, the missing punctuation mark or the capital letter that is supposed to be inserted there. All right, so let's look at line one. Have you heard about the Paralympic Games? All right, so in looking at line one, I'm just going to hold on a couple of seconds uh, so we can have a call on the line. I'm going to give a somebody a chance to help me. And I already have a caller. Good evening. Welcome to See Results. Hello. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Yes, miss. Okay, is this Javen? Yes, miss. Okay, Javen. So, with number seven, go ahead yes. and tell me what is missing there. You have to put a question mark after games. After games. All right. Yes. Any specific reason why? What yes, gave that to me? Because the because the, the the person who wrote who wrote this yes. um paragraph they put the ask a question at the start of it. So the question put a question mark for number seven. Okay, great job, Javen. Thanks for calling. Yeah, well, right, so Javan is very correct and actually didn't put a question to the beginning of number seven, but I do understand what he's trying to say, right? Um, actually, it's a question word, right? Just like our five W's and our H, here we have have, the word have, right? Which indicates it's a question. Let's move on to the number eight. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Mm -hmm. what do you think? Hi, good evening. Hello. Hi, welcome. Thanks good for joining evening. see results. Hi, good evening. Who am I speaking with? Jaden Richards. Nice to have you with us. So, can you help us with number eight? Number eight? Number eight? Yes, oh, or the second eight. line. D. D is differently supposed to have a capital D. Capital D. Great job. Thanks for calling. Thank you. All right, so um, this one fairly simple because we know that we just ended um, or came at the end of a sentence, so in this case, a question. Right, using a question mark, then therefore the next word that follows is going to be uh, begin or would begin with a capital letter, the start of a sentence. All right, let's move on. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening, caller. Hello, good evening. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Alex. Okay, Alex. So number nine, Alex. Mm, yes, miss. Take your time. Read the line and then you can give us the answer. Okay. The error in line nine is 
uh, a colon between as and tennis. Excellent job. Can you tell me why? Because um, they are about to list. To and list something. Listing, you must put a colon. Excellent job, Alex. Thanks for calling. Right, so okay, that is absolutely correct. Um, just want to point out, however, we aren't looking for errors, but rather missing punctuation marks and capital letters, right? Now let's move on to number 10. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Good evening, caller. Good evening. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Good evening. Good evening. Who am I speaking with? Cynthia. Nice to have you with us. So help us with number 10. Um, uh, can you repeat that, please? The badminton and swimming, full stop. Full stop after the word? Full stop after the word swimming. Great job. Thank you so much for calling. All right, so that is absolutely correct. And how, how will you be able to identify where to put a full stop? In this case, um, just as in the first example, where we had a question mark followed by a capital letter, here we have a full stop, right? Um, reason being, racial, a proper noun, right, also begins with a capital letter, which, are, which was our clue or indicator, right, that led us to believe that we needed a full stop here, which is correct. Right, let's move on to number 11. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Good evening, Carla. Good evening. Hi, I'm welcome. Welcome. Nice to have you with us. Can you help us with number 11? So, I think here after the new show. Yes. It's supposed to be a capital C. Excellent job. Right, because that is the person's last name, also a proper noun. Right, so that is absolutely correct. And let Thank me you just, much. you're welcome. And I'm going to take a final call to help us with number 12. Good evening, welcome to see results. Good evening, caller. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Jaden. So, Jaden, help us with number 12. Um, cup. Is a capital T for Trinidad. Capital T for Trinidad, right? So, great job. Thank you so much for calling. You're welcome. Okay. So, I'm just going to go through these quickly. Um, now, we already identified um, all the missing punctuation marks and the capital letters. Now, when we were looking at punctuation marks and capital letters, we looked at, you know, their usage, how to use them and when to use them. Um, we're just going to take a short pause. It's Maghrib time, so we're going to take a break. But when we come back, we're going to continue with the discussion. Stay tuned with us, guys. We'll be right back.
Assalamu alaikum, good evening guys. Welcome back to C Results. I'm Miss Naila and you are joining me for English Language Arts. Right, so just before the break, uh, we completed this task, which is actually punctuation and capitalization. All right, and we already looked at um, the missing punctuation and capital letters. Now, I just want to discuss a moment with you, you know, the usage of some of these punctuation marks. Now, when do we use a, a question mark? We know, commonly use a question mark at the end of a question. And there are question words, you know, that we look for just as we have the word have here as a clue indicator to help us determine what is a question, right? So, for instance, we have the five W's and H, who, what, when, why, and so on. We have have, we have do, is, and all of that. Of course, you have to read your sentence in context, and that will also allow you to understand whether it's a question or if it requires a question mark or exclamation mark or a full stop and so on. Now, uh, this is just a refresher, um, you know, to the use of some of these punctuation marks, right? Um, here we had, in this passage, a couple of um, capital letters being used. When do we use capital letters? Yes, at the beginning of sentences, but also for proper nouns. You must know what a proper noun is in order to use your capital letters, right? Also, you have your colon, right? Um, so the caller rightfully said we use a colon when we are about to list items. In this case, what were we listing? We were listing the sports um, that the, the passage was speaking of, right? So when we are about to list items, we use a colon. A full stop is used at the end of a sentence, right? Similarly to a question mark, right? As we go along and we encounter other punctuation marks in the upcoming SCA practice papers, we again will do some refreshers um, about the usage of punctuation marks simply because it's very simple for you to forget, right? And um, if you aren't doing constant revision or practice tests and continuously, continuously reminding yourself, you know, how should I use these punctuation marks? It's going to affect you not only in this task, but also for your creative writing and that is really important for creative writing in creative writing um, there's a maximum of five marks you can earn or lose right regarding um, you know how well you punctuate your story or your report so you have to be a very special attention to punctuation and capitalization right um, but don't worry I am here and I will assist you as best as I can so we're going to move on to grammar or task three there is one grammatical error in every line in the passage below. Um, underline each error and write the correct form of the word in the box provided. For grammar, this section is actually worth 12 marks. Again, similarly to spelling, you have to underline and then you have to give us the correct form um, of the word. So let's see. We're going to read this and again, I'm going to open up the lines to you. All right, so let's read this together. Octopuses lives in tropical and temperate waters at the ocean. There are around 300 species. These fascinated creatures have eight limbs called tentacles and three hearts. They usually live for one or two years. In self-defense, they eject ink to distracting predators. Right? Uh, again, just want to remind you guys, please read uh, your passage as many times as you like or as needed. With grammar, it's very easy for us to confuse it with spelling right? or even punctuation marks. So sometimes, you know, you ask um, for a student to underline the error and they underline the punctuation mark. Remember, grammar, we are looking specifically for rules, right? So go back to all those grammar, grammar rules, you know, um, with subject and object and, you know, with your subject agreeing to your verb and your nouns and all of those things, right? So you're looking at parts of speech, right? So be very careful with all of that. So let's go to number 13, and we do have a call on the line to help us. Good evening. Welcome to See Results. Hi, good evening, caller. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? From New York. Hi, nice to have you with us. So help us with the first line here. So you have to give me the error, and then you have to give us the correction, okay? Are you there, Koala? Yes. Uh, okay. To okay. Change the Can you repeat that, please? Let to change the word. I did not catch that. Can you repeat that one more time? Let to live to change to live. 
close. I mean. Okay, for some reason, I'm not hearing this call very well. I do apologize. Right, um, we will take another call. You can try back caller, please. I encourage you to. All right, good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello, good evening. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Jonathan Senanan again. So, Jonathan, um, help us with this first line here, number 13. Okay, so the answer is live and not live. Why live. is that? Why is that? Because when octopus is, it's plural. Uh -huh. and, and we know that when it, when it um, ends with S, it means that it is singular. But octopus is since it's plural, you need a plural verb. Excellent job, Jonathan. Thank you so much for calling and your explanation. Right? So while that is yes, correct, exactly. you're welcome. So while his explanation is correct, um, I will just you know, reiterate the correct terms for your, well, for the first line, right? For the first error, I don't want to mention it just yet. I'm just going to wait till we complete this task and then I will go through it line by line. Let's take another call. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening, caller. Hello, good evening. Hi, welcome. What's your name? Alex. Nice to have you with us again, Alex. So help us with number 14. Number 14. Yes. Or the second I, line. I think I've, I found my answer. Go ahead. It is uh, at. What should it be? In. In. Excellent job. Um, do you have an explanation for your answer or do you just know that's the correct answer? Well, I think it's because they live in the sea and Really not, at not at the sea. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for calling. All right, let's Thank go on you. to the next line. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hi, caller. Good welcome. Evening. Hi, good evening. Who am I speaking with? Jaden. Okay, welcome. So help me with number 15. It's changing half to half. Are you there, Kuala? Yes. Okay. Take your time. Yes. Okay. Take your time. Changing half to half. What is the error? What is the error? How supposed to be half. Um, okay. Why is that? Why do you believe that this is the error here? Why do you believe that this is the error? Any specific reason? No. Okay. So, all right. So is that your final answer? Yes. Okay. All right. So unfortunately, that is not uh, correct, but I will explain the correct answer to you. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for calling. Okay. Okay, so I will do that uh, shortly as soon as we complete the passage. I'm going to give another student a chance to give me the correct answer in this line. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Good evening, Kola. Welcome to see results. Hi, welcome. The answer for number 15 is fascinating. Fascinating rather than? fascinated. Um, yes. Can you explain to me why? Um, no, I just know by the time I look at the word. Okay, no problem. That's fine once you get the correct answer. Thank you so much for calling. You're right. welcome. Right, so it's great that you guys know the answer from just looking at the line, but please, um, somewhere along the lines, you will need to know the explanation, right? Um, maybe sometime you might be able, you know, just might just bypass um, this and you may not be able to see it so clearly, right? So, you know, at the back of your mind, you should know your rules. So somewhere when you get some time, please try and incorporate that. All right? Good evening. Welcome to see results. 
Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Welcome. Who am I speaking with? This is Jonathan. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, Jonathan. We lost that call. Right, but we know Jonathan was on the line. Good evening. Welcome to Series Results. Hi, welcome. Hello. Hi, welcome. Who Hello, am I speaking with? Well, Alaikum Assalam. Who am I speaking with? I'm speaking with Venetia. I'm your speaker with Venetia. Nice to have you with us. Welcome. So help me at number 16. Um, number 16 is supposed to be three hearts. Hearts, right? Any specific reason why? Yeah, because three is more than one. Excellent. Right? Thank you yeah. so much for calling. Right? And You're that, welcome. So this um, error here is as simple as that. Right? We're looking at singular and plural. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. I'm Hi, welcome. Here. Who am I speaking with? Me, I'm still here. Okay. So help us with number 17. Yes. It's supposed to be usually. Usually. Do you know why? No. It just sounds as it's supposed to be there, right? Yes. All right. That's fine. Thanks so much for calling. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. So I'm going to take a final call to end off this task. Good evening. Welcome to see results. Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Who am I speaking Hello. with? Hi. Call. Are you there? Yes. Okay. So help us with the last line. You get it wrong? Destructing to destruct. Okay. Do you know why? No. Okay. But you are correct, okay? Okay. Thanks for calling. Good. Okay. So let's just take a minute and go through this um, short passage. Right? Um, octopuses lives in tropical and temperate. Now, we know the errors lives. All the errors actually identified are correct. Right? So let's look at the correction and reason for the correction. So... Octopuses live, right? So we know that a plural subject is followed by a plural verb, right? So our plural verbs do not end with S. Our plural nouns end in S, right? So that's very easy uh, to confuse some of you, so you have to know this rule. So octopuses live. So a plural subject, octopuses being plural, right? And octopus will be your singular form. So octopuses plural live is your plural form. So your plural subject is followed by a plural verb, right? Similarly with a singular subject is followed by a singular verb, right? And then in your second line, waters at the ocean. So instead of at, we know that it's supposed to be in, right? What is, how do we, how do we identify or what do we call this? This is actually, actually referred to as the correct use of your preposition. So both at and in are prepositions, but it's a matter of choosing the correct preposition or the suitable preposition for your or in your sentence, right? So waters in the ocean, not at the ocean, right? There are around 300 species. These fascinated creatures have eight, right? So it's actually the adjective fascinating rather than um, the adjective fascinated, right? So you're looking again at the correct form of the adjective to use in your sentence have eight limbs called tentacles and three hearts right our caller rightfully pointed out that it's three so it's plural right therefore it's more than one um, it is different from our plural subject followed by a plural verb in this case heart is not a verb right it's a noun so three hearts right so and i actually wrote heart there Right, so now that we are going over the correction, I spotted that. So, so the correct answer is actually hearts. So three hearts, they usually live. So we here is required the adverb usually, right? So we add ly, and we know there are some adverbs that end in ly. They usually live for one or two years instead of they usual live, right? And just as our callers have been saying, that, you know, just by reading the sentence or looking at it, they know what the error is, right? So that is something that also helps a lot of students, right? Just reading the sentence, you are able to identify the error. It sounds grammatically incorrect, right? So that's a great way of helping you determine your error. In self-defense, they eject ink to distracting predators. Now, 
when we use the word to, in this case, it is followed by the infinitive or the base form of the word, right? For example, to distract predators, or if I say to jump or to hop, I will not say to hop in or to jump in, right? So similarly here, to distract, the, the base form of the word or the infinitive, right, is the same thing rather than distracting predators, right? So again, this is another 12 marks and we are now up to 30 marks. So that is with spelling, your punctuation, and capitalization, and your grammar section. Now, if you, um, you know, you're up to 30 marks with us, uh, that means you have 30 full marks in section one of your paper. And we have completed section one of the paper. So now what's left to do, move on to section two and earn the rest of your marks. Now it's, it's not, I will not say it's very easy, but it can be very simple if you take your time you master your rules, you keep revising, and you do what is necessary, right? The important thing is that you try your absolute best and nothing else, right? So let's move on to section two. We are going to move on to um, the comprehension. We have about 10 minutes left, so we can probably get about five questions in. So let's see if we can do that. So read the passage, shipwreck, and answer questions 19 to 28. Your section two comprehension, um, is actually 20 marks, right? So our aim is to earn 20 marks and nothing less, right? Now, if you are or are struggling with comprehension skills, so for example, you are one of those students, you don't know how to answer a question properly. And don't be alarmed, there are a lot of people, you know, have difficulty with this. They are not sure how to approach um, the answer. How do I start answering this question? They know the answer, but they are stuck. Right, so when we get to the questions part of the comprehension, I will just remind you guys how we answer questions in a complete sentence. Right, now that is really important and crucial. Don't um, neglect that, right? Uh, we pay close attention to how you answer questions. It also helps you, of course, in your creative writing. So let's go ahead and read. Shipwreck. As the night wore on, the waves and rain kept taking more of our ship but we managed to stay in our cabin above water. We searched for what was left of the ship in a panic, finding food and putting together a meal for the family. Just then, Fritz, my oldest son said, Father, why don't we find something to make life jackets or float belts, and then we can all swim to shore. It was a great idea. We found empty flasks and cans that we connected together to make life jackets of sorts and put them on so we might survive if we were washed overboard. The life jackets wouldn't last for a long swim, but they might give us a moment or two more. We also found matches, knives, rope, and other useful things to carry, just in case. Fritz, Ernest, Jack, and Franz could now sleep on the broken ship, while my wife and I waited up all night watching the storm. Finally, when day came, we saw that the sky had begun to clear and we woke the boys. They were surprised that the other shipmates had deserted in the lifeboats, but we told them not to fear. But Papa, they cried, what has become of everyone? Are all the sailors gone? Why did they leave us? We should swim to shore now, Fritz interrupted. I think we should build a raft and use that to get there safely, said Ernest. These float belts may not, may not do the trick. First, let's search the rest of the ship to see what we can find, I answered. Let's all meet back here with whatever we think will be useful. Right? Um, shipwreck in the Swiss family, Robinson. So this was taken from Penguin Books Limited. Right, guys? So let's go on to the questions here. That first question reads, what was the weather like in the first paragraph? give a line from the passage that shows this. So before I start taking calls to answer these questions, let's just look at you know, some of the ways to answer or approach questions and answers. So for example, in this question here, they're asking you what was the weather like in the first paragraph, right? Um, somebody might say, so I'm not, just gonna give, I'm not going to give the correct answer. Here I'm just giving you an example, right? So a student might say, um, it was sunny. Right, so that is fine, but how can you better answer that question? Right, so the question is asking you, what was the weather like in the first paragraph? It is specific, right, referring to that first paragraph. So you can say the weather 
um, in the first paragraph is or was, right? And you give the, your explanation of the weather, right? Or according to the first paragraph, the weather was. So that's two ways there that you can approach or how to answer this part of the question. Now, if you're not sure, you know, um, how to even arrive at that, what can you do? You can simply look at the question itself and, you know, we usually start answering a question by using the stem of the question. And what do I mean by stem? So what was the weather like in the first paragraph? Here is the stem of the question. The weather was so and so in the first paragraph. So I'm using part of the question to help me answer or to give my answer to the question. So that is what we call the stem of the question, right? So it's right there. Just read it carefully and that will, that will help you. Give a line from the passage that shows this, a line from the passage that shows this is, and you give that line, you can use inverted commas to help you also if you are quoting something, right? So as we go along answering questions, um, even the more difficult ones that you don't know exactly, how shall I answer this? Like one of those inferential questions where they ask you to think, right? Or your opinion about something, we are going to look at that closely. So let's take a call to help us with number 19. Good evening, caller. Welcome to see results. Hi, welcome. So I'm going to hold on to, for that call and I just want to mention... Hello. Hi, good evening and welcome to see results. Good evening. Hi, who am I speaking with? Sean Samuel. Hi, nice to have you with us, Sam. So help us with number 19, Sam. Um. Are you there? Yes. Okay. So, did you catch the question? Yes. Okay. And would you like me to go to the first paragraph? Yes. Okay. Take your time, read it through. And then you can give us your answer when you are ready. The weather was stormy. Right. So, um, is there another answer? While well, your answer is correct, and yes, the weather was stormy, I am talking about, you know, answering the question per se. Can you answer that question differently? The waves and rain kept taking more of our ship. Okay, I understand what you mean, right? But just before you call, we were just given examples referring specifically to the question, what was the weather like in the first paragraph? And we said, you could have said... Um, did you hear that part of the program just before you called? No. Okay, that's all right. We were just discussing ways to answer questions and how you can use the question to help you answer it. For example, the weather was stormy in the first paragraph or according to the first paragraph, it was stormy. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Okay, but your answer is in fact correct and you will be awarded your marks, right? But the second part of the question says, give a line from the passage that shows this. And the line that you just gave us, where the waves and the rain kept taking more, is actually correct as well. Right? So that is a total of two marks you will earn for your question. So thank you so much for calling. Okay, I'm not sure if you left us already. Right? But that was in fact correct. Right? It was stormy in the first paragraph as shown in the line. The waves and the rain kept taking more of our ship. Right? So anything along these lines will be correct. You must have the key information, what the question is looking for. Please um, just note in this question, there are two parts to it. Right? Also, it's worth two marks. Don't answer just one part of it. You will only earn one mark. Right? That's, very, um, that's, that's an easy way that you will lose that one mark. Let's go on to number 20. Let's take this call. Good evening. Welcome to Series Results. Hi, good evening, Kuala. Hi, Agnes. Hi, welcome. Who am I speaking with? Kelly Spencer. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Nice to have you with us again. Thank you. Okay, Kelly. So, name two useful items the characters found on the ship. Can you go back to the passage, please? Sure. Um. useful items the crafters found on the ship were uh, knives and ropes. Excellent job, Kelly. Thanks for calling. 
No problem. Okay, so two useful items found. So you can have a combination, right? So any of these two, matches, knives, rope, empty, flask, cans, right? So any two of those will be correct. So guys, we are quickly running out of time. Um, I'm going to stop there with the comprehension, but tomorrow again, we do have ELA and we have creative writing, right? Um, just before we go, I just want to remind you guys uh, that we have an essay that is actually due on our Edmodo class. The class code is actually going to be up on your screen any moment now. So feel free to join the Edmodo class. Visit us at www.edmodo.com. For those of you, our new viewers who aren't sure about our Edmodo class, you know you're not familiar with it, right? This is one of the e-classes that we have. And this is the one that we have actually been using since the start of November with the initiation of this program, right? So we have, we have been using Edmodo and so far it has been a great community for our learners. Right? Students often exchange questions, ideas, and their work, you know, with each other, helping and correcting, you know, some of the stuff posted, right? So, you know, the instructions are simple for both students and for parents, and that is correct. Yes, parents, you can join our class. Now, you will not um, be allowed to take the quizzes, uh, but you will be there to monitor your child's progress and ensure, you know, um, ensure that they are doing what they are supposed to do, right? In terms of respect and guidelines and so on with the classroom. So please, we invite you, um, both students and parents, to get on board with us, um, join our Edmodo class, and please complete that, that essay at the, for the end of the week, right? Um, as you know, as we commonly do, we share students' pieces, both narrative and report writing, uh, with you and we critique it, right? Um, we mark them, so we look at the rubric, we look at your submission, and we we'll always try to encourage you to submit and to help you improve in areas of weaknesses, right? Um, so don't forget, guys, to join us tomorrow for ELA and Creative Writing. And of course, follow us on our Facebook page, see results, and our YouTube channel uh, for all those videos and great content that we discussed uh, a little bit earlier on. Right, so I do hope that you have a pleasant evening, guys, and rejoin us again tomorrow for more C results. Stay tuned with us, guys. C results with C results. So, tomorrow I look forward to being with you again. Have a good evening.